Hi, I'm Tavit from Kingpost, and this is our quick start guide to playing Moby Dick or the Card Game, a tabletop adventure for two to four players. Unlike other games you might have played, your only hope in Moby Dick or the Card Game is to be the last survivor of the Pequod's doomed voyage. Each game comes with three decks, 40 wooden oil tokens, two custom dice, four fast unfast cards, a measure card, and the instruction booklet. The three decks consist of 43 sea cards, the blue deck, 36 sailor cards, the red deck, and 23 whale cards, the gray deck. To set up a game, have the players decide how many chapter cards they want to play through before triggering the final hunt of Moby Dick. A four or five chapter game tends to take under an hour to play, while a 10 chapter game can last for an hour and a half to two hours. Search the C deck for the chapter card called Lumens and set it aside. Next, search the Sailor deck for the Ishmael and Ahab cards and set those aside. Give each player one fast unfast card and have each player roll one die to see who goes first. The nautical images engraved on the dice signify numbers. The harpoon is one, the sun and moon, two, the quadrant, three, the compass, four, the anchor, five, and the wheel, six. The player who rolls the highest number gets the first turn and begins the game with the Ishmael card and the measure. Shuffle up all the decks and arrange the three decks between the players and deal each player a total of three sailors face up. Now you're ready to start the game. Each player's turn consists of three phases, and the first phase is the gam. During a gam, a player may buy sailors from the sailor deck or discard pile with oil tokens, bribe sailors away from other players, or trade sailors. A player can possess a crew of up to seven sailors. If you choose to hire sailors from the sailor deck, the first sailor you hire costs a single oil token, a second sailor costs two additional tokens, and a third sailor costs three additional tokens. From the discard pile, the costs are reversed. Three tokens to buy the first sailor, two to buy the second, and finally an additional single token for the third. You can also attempt to bribe a sailor from another player once per turn by offering 20 times the strength of that sailor in oil. Flask, for example, with a strength of one, could be bribed away from another player for the cost of 20 barrels of oil, or two oil tokens. Bribe oil is not given to the player whose sailor has been taken. Rather, the oil is discarded when the bribe is complete. The player who controls the sailor has one opportunity to counter the bribe by paying the price themselves to keep the sailor in their own crew. If the bribe is countered in this way, the originally offered 20 barrels is kept by the bribing player, but they cannot attempt another bribe on that turn. During the game, player can also initiate trades, offering anything, another sailor, a swig of grog, or a jig, whatever it takes to get the sailor you want. Once you're done with the game, simply draw a card from the C deck to see what the C has in store for you. Think of each card from the C deck as a fateful day in the Pequod's voyage. Among the 43 cards, 10 of them are chapters. Chapter cards have a black background to set them apart from every other C card and act as the timekeeper counting down to the end of each game. Every chapter card has an effect, which changes the conditions of the game until the next chapter is drawn. Some chapters also have a mission. If a player can complete the mission as described on the card while that chapter is in effect, then that player receives an immediate bonus of 50 barrels of oil, or 5 wooden oil tokens. If you draw a chapter during your turn, simply place it over the last chapter that was in effect and read the new chapter's information out loud to the other players. Remember, chapter effects are not cumulative. The next group of cards found in the C deck are the Moby Dick cards. If a player draws a Moby Dick card before the agreed upon number of chapter cards have been drawn into play, the player sets the Moby Dick card aside face up and proceeds to draw cards from the C deck until the next chapter is pulled. Once the next chapter is reached, take all the cards that were skipped, including the Moby Dick card, and shuffle them all back into the C deck. Within the C deck, you'll also find creature cards. If drawn, these cards initiate a whale hunt for all players who possess at least one sailor. Every creature card shows the maximum amount of sailors that a player can bring into the hunt, the amount of oil that will be awarded to the player that strikes the killing blow, and most importantly, the strength of the whale. If a whale has any further modifications to its abilities, it'll be written at the bottom of the card. The remainder of the C deck is made up of event cards, which represent different occurrences during the Pequod's journey. If you draw one of these cards during your turn, simply follow the instructions on the bottom of the card and then discard it. Among the event cards, you'll find three ports of call. If you draw one of these cards during a hunt, follow the instructions at the bottom of the card, but do not discard them as you would the other C cards. Instead, place them aside somewhere visible to remind all the players which ports have been visited. 
Here we see that the player sighted a right whale, so now it's time for every player to lower their whale boats and pursue the whale. Every whale hunt brings into play the most dangerous deck of the game, the whale deck. The whale deck represents the various actions and defenses of the whale during a hunt. The tail, for example, instantly kills a single sailor from your crew, while the brutal stove boat knocks a player out of the hunt entirely while also killing up to three sailors. Browse through the whale deck and get a feel for the various actions and their consequences. A well-prepared player has a much better chance of surviving the perils of the hunt. The player that drew the whale from the sea deck gets the first turn during the hunt, and the first thing to do during your hunt turn is to draw a card from the whale deck and deal with its effects. Once you've dealt with the effects of the whale card, you're allowed to either retreat from the hunt or attempt to strike the whale. A player attempts to strike a whale by rolling two dice and adding those values and the strengths of their sailors together. If that combined number is greater than or equal to the strength of the whale, then the whale has been struck. The tie always goes to the player. Whether or not the player has struck the whale successfully, their hunt turn is over, and the next player must repeat the process by drawing the next whale card, reacting to its effects, then retreating or attempting to strike the whale. Every player comes into the hunt unfast. That means not fastened to the whale. After striking a whale successfully once, the player becomes fast, fastened to the whale by their harpoon. A second successful strike kills the whale. So use the fast and unfast card to track your progress during the hunt. Also remember that when you're fast, you gain an additional plus one crew strength. If any player rolls double harpoons, it is considered an automatic strike. Players that bring a harpooner into the hunt automatically strike the whale if any set of doubles are rolled. Now let's take a moment and talk about the sailor cards. Every sailor card contains two important pieces of information, the sailor's strength and his ability. Here we see the player drew the tail, and lucky for them they happen to have the Danish sailor in their crew, so they can choose to activate the sailor's ability to negate the tail. When a sailor is activated, simply push their card forward to symbolize that brave sailor risking his own safety to protect his crewmates from certain doom. If the whale deck calls for the death of one of your sailors that you cannot prevent through negation or other sailor abilities, the player must choose first from among her activated sailors to die. If you happen to have more than one activated sailor at the time of death, you can choose freely from amongst the activated sailors which will die first. Some sailor abilities are italicized. In these cases, a player need not activate the sailor to gain the benefits of their ability. If any whale card calls for a roll of greater than three, that roll is taken with one die. Some whale cards force you to lose your turn, which means that after you've dealt with the rest of the effect of that whale card, you are not permitted to attempt to strike the whale or retreat from the hunt until your next turn. The hunt continues in this fashion until the whale is killed, all the sailors in the hunt have retreated or been killed, or if the whale escapes through unknown trickery. When a sailor dies, he is discarded below the sailor deck except for Ahab and Ishmael. If Ahab dies, he returns to his cabin to wait for the next chapter or Moby Dick sighting. And if Ishmael dies, he is passed to the player on the left. Ahab begins the game brooding in his cabin, set aside from play. Whenever a chapter card or Moby Dick card is drawn, Ahab joins the crew of the player that drew that card. Ahab's abilities are contingent upon which chapter is currently in play. Check each chapter card as they're drawn to see if it affects Ahab's strength or abilities. Ishmael has the unique ability to copy the ability of any other sailor in another whale boat on a hunt. When a player successfully strikes the killing blow, they can either take the oil bonus listed on the whale's card or take one sailor from another player's crew. If a whale is successfully killed, all the players in the game, regardless of whether they are still in that particular hunt, receive 10 barrels or one token of oil as their collected payment. If any player manages to capture a legendary whale, that player is awarded a permanent negation of a certain whale card effect. Remember that after each whale hunt, you should shuffle the whale deck and its discard pile to prepare for the next hunt. The end of the hunt marks the end of the player who drew the whale's turn. So they pass the measure to the left, and the next player's turn begins. The measure card is not passed during a whale hunt, and helps to keep track of whose turn it is outside of the hunt. Once the agreed upon number of chapter cards are in play, and the Moby Dick card is drawn, all players enter the final hunt to see who will survive the terror of the white whale. When the final hunt is initiated, flip the measure card over to reveal the special rule modifications. In the final hunt, 
Moby Dick is hunting the players. All players come into the final hunt already fast to Moby Dick. Ahab and Fadala both begin the hunt activated. Players must bring all of their sailors out, and it becomes impossible for any player to lose their turn or retreat. The player who drew Moby Dick goes first, and as is the case in every hunt, they draw a card from the top of the whale deck and must react to it. Notice that on the rule modification card, some specific effects of whale cards have been altered for this battle. Once the player is dealt with that whale card, they must then roll dice as Moby Dick, relentlessly attacking their sailors. If after dealing with a whale card's effect, you possess four or more sailors in your crew, roll two dice as Moby Dick. If you possess three or fewer sailors after dealing with the effects of a whale card, you must only roll one die as Moby Dick. And if that roll is greater than the combined strengths of your remaining sailors, then one must die. The final hunt continues as such until only one player remains in possession of a living sailor or sailors, thus surviving the terror of the white whale and earning the dark privilege to say, call me Ishmael. Thanks so much for checking out our quick start guide to Moby Dick or the card game. If you have any deeper gameplay questions, check out our website at www.mobydickgame.com for our FAQ. Good luck out there and happy